There are several approaches to requirements modeling. Each approach attempts to represent an aspect of the software system that needs to be developed. The approach that analysts need to follow is dependent on both, first, the technology resources available, and lastly, the process model that they follow. Recall that for extreme programming, the object-oriented programming paradigm or OOP paradigm is recommended. This means that the, an that the analysis tools to use should complement the OOP approach. Now, each of the approaches that we will learn models the user requirements from four different points of view. We have scenario-based models, we have class models, behavioral models, and flow models. Later, I will discuss each definition in the next slide. Let us start with scenario-based model. Elements in scenario-based model depicts how the user interacts with the system and the specific sequence of activities that occur at the software is used. This means um, representing the various scenarios that users will interact with the system. Some tools that can be used is what we call, um, one example is the use cases, and the other one is the, uh, the user stories. I believe that user stories was discussed in the agile process model. Hopefully you can still recall. Next model is what we call class-based model. Class-based elements model the, ob um, the objects that the system will manipulate, the operations that will be applied to the objects to affect the manipulation, relationships between the objects, and the collaborations that occur between the classes that are defined. I believe, uh, I hope that you have gained a lot of insights about the OOP approach. Um, this was discussed um, in your last or in your previous topic or in your previous um, subject, which is the OOP or Object Oriented Programming. Um, this type of modeling, by the way, class, um, follows an object-oriented approach where all the important elements of the system are modeled as objects. Um, I believe that if we are talking about the class-based elements, models, um, this talk, uh, actually, uh, we are talking about the objects here. That is actually the instance of the class. Am I right? <laughs> okay. Um, some tools that can be used for class-based model are class diagrams here. And we also have the collaboration diagrams or the CRC. I believe I have mentioned this in the extreme programming. Next, the third approach is the behavioral aspect of the system. We have the behavioral models. Behavioral elements depict how external events change the state of the system or the classes that reside within it. The behavioral approach also follows an object-oriented analysis of user requirements. Some tools can be used in this model is what we call state diagrams, and we also have the sequence diagrams. You will know more about this in our next topic. And lastly, we have the flow models. Okay. Flow-oriented elements represent the system as an information transform, depicting how data objects are transformed as they flow, um, as they flow through various system functions. The flow models is a representation how data is processed in the system. Tools that are available or that can be used in flow models is what we call DFD or the data flow diagram. And we also have data models. Data models are ERD or the entity really, uh, relationship diagrams um, that was discussed in your database subject. So hopefully you are able to can still remember those topics. 
Our goal is to suggest a combination of representations that will provide stakeholders with the best model of software requirements and the most effective bridge to software design. Our succeeding lessons, by the way, class, will help you explore uh, more each approach in more detail.